Let's go to Poland now. An interesting story there, currently flying slightly below the radar. There's a battle going on for the country's soul. This after new documents were revealed suggesting that the slayer of communism, Lech Wałęsa, may have spied for the Soviets before turning on them. It's still unclear whether the documents are authentic, but the ruling Conservative Party is accusing Wałęsa, uh, Poland's first post-communist -communist president, of being a fraud. Liberals, meanwhile, have been defending his legacy. Before we go to our in-depth report in Poland, here's Radoslav Markowski, who joins us from Warsaw. Hello, you're, you're head of the uh, politics department at the Warsaw School of Social Sciences, and it seems that there is a battle to rewrite the country's recent history. Well, indeed, but just a uh, uh, clarification on what you've just said. I mean, the, 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 there was no accusation that uh, Lech Wałęsa was a spy of uh, the, uh, the, for Soviets. It's just the accusation that he has signed certain documents uh, uh, just indicating that he might have... Uh, well, isn't been, the implication uh, that he collaborated with the Soviets, that he spied for them? No, no, no. There is no such spying for a, for a different countries. Another issue than simply uh, collaborating with uh, the secret police of the then communist Poland, of course. And uh, I just want to clarify that that the spying is not the issue. It is all right. Just well, he he did have to defend just the early seven. To complete the clarification, then, he did have to defend himself, uh, the former Polish president, he did have to defend himself in the press, saying that he never took money from them, but yes, he did have contact with them and uh, had a policy of speaking yes, so, with them during his days as a yeah, unionist. It's, it's a complicated thing. Let me remind you that at that time he was a very young, uh, very poorly educated, frightened young worker who just have experienced uh, one of the most traumatic historical events in Polish history, namely that the Polish army was simply shooting the workers in Gdańsk, Gdynia, Szczecin and other places in 1970. And of course, there were many of them at that time. Let, let's be just to this kind of retrospective interpretation. At that time, he, he didn't know he will be a, a Lech Wałęsa president of Poland in 20 years or, uh, you know, a, a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, so he was one of the thousands who have signed something, and then still, this this there is a big debate whether. When you say you sign know, something, you mean sign a document with the secret police? Yeah, there were many people at that time. You know, secret police was coming knocking at the doors of many Poles at the time, asking to sign all kinds of stupid papers, saying, for instance, that if you go abroad, you would not uh, 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 try to overturn the Poles. Polish uh, People's Republic government. And of course, uh, many people did sign such documents. So, but again, this is a complicated matter. And of course, if you look at the biography of Lech Wałęsa, you can distinguish at least three uh, periods. One is this very young person who is lost in reality and he might have signed something. Mm -hmm. Then there is this uh, very powerful and very heroic person who under the martial law and in the 80s is the leader of the solidarity, which leads ultimately to the collapse of communism. And finally, he's not a very good, very effective president of Poland, 1990-95. Uh, and currently he is uh, just a, a public personality. So, so one has to distinguish these three phases in which uh, there are uh, definitely very positive elements of his biography and also the, the kind of um, weaknesses that all of us have. All right, Radoslav, we'll get back to you in just a moment. But first, let's watch this report by Gulliver Krag. It paints a picture of modern-day Poland still coming to terms with its post-communist legacy. Gdansk and its famous shipyard, the birthplace of Solidarity, the trade union movement that brought down communism in Poland in the 1980s. Amid music from that era, thousands gathered here last month in support of Lech Wałęsa, the movement's former leader, today accused of being an informer. I, Henryka Chivonos, 1980 strike participant and co-founder of Solidarity, say to you, don't let them take us for fools. But Wenzer was never an informant. We are the ones who won our freedom. And now some little runt wants to take it away. She is referring to Jarosław Kaczynski, leader of the ruling Law and Justice Party. Much mocked at the demo, he's accused of authoritarianism, 
and of trying to undermine Lech Wałęsa's legacy. Files published last month appear to detail the Solidarity leader's work in the 1970s as a secret agent, codenamed Bolek. He says they're forged. There are so many obvious fakes in there. You don't need professionals to see that. Professional graphologists are looking at the files, though. Their analysis will take months. Some experts have already said the documents probably are genuine. The question is, does it matter? In central Gdansk, on the same day as the rally for Wałęsa, there was a commemoration of some other anti-communist fighters, the partisans active just after World War II. Some of these armed groups carried out pogroms against Jews and Orthodox Christians, as well as resisting Stalinism. But conservative nationalists in Poland tend to see them as heroes, more worthy heroes than of Wałęsa compromised by his youthful collaboration. After 1989, communists continued to hold power. They told us that solidarity was in charge, but that was not true. It was all a big lie. Poland's celebrated post-communist transition, all a big lie? It's a belief surprisingly widely held, including by much of the Solidarity Trade Union's current leadership, which supports Kaczynski's party. To me, the biggest indicator that Wawensa was a bad egg is what happened after 1989. Karol Guzikiewicz takes us to visit the Gdansk shipyard, where he's worked all his life. Only a small part of it still functions today. The industry lost out to competition from China. To workers who suffered, it's a symbol of what went wrong with the transition. There was uncontrolled privatization. Poland's economic assets were simply looted by the liberals, who were finally voted out last October. And that's why they're protesting now. Today our main product, apart from ship parts, is towers for wind turbines. This hall is being optimized for their production. Today only 1,000 people work in the shipyard. That's for all the companies present here combined. There used to be 17,000 employees. Still, we hope to rebuild this place under the new government. Law and Justice has prepared a bill to save Poland's shipbuilding industry, which it says will create 5,000 new jobs in Gdansk alone. But liberals call the party's promises populist and irresponsible. Henryka Krzywonos, the former strike leader who spoke at the Wałęsa rally, is now a liberal MP. To me, law and justice is a sect. It has infected people's brains and they don't understand what they're doing. All the great achievements for which Poland has earned so much respect are now being warped and denied. One travels from Gdansk to Warsaw these days on slick, modern trains. A journey through a country enjoying the most prosperous period in its thousand-year history. Poland's capitalist transition certainly left some people by the wayside, but it also left nearby countries with comparable GDPs in 1990 far behind. Jarosław Kaczynski has for some time been promoting the theory that there was a conspiracy between the communist elite and the Solidarity leadership in 1989 to the detriment of ordinary Polish people. This is simply a lie. Poland's leading daily, the liberal Gazeta Wyborcza, finds Kaczynski's rhetoric deeply alarming. It's a mix of left-wing and right-wing, nationalist and socialist. Such amalgams work very well. We know how they worked well in the past, and they still work today. Marine Le Pen in France is doing the same. The Polish government has championed a new film glorifying the post-war anti-communist partisans. President Andrzej Duda, a Kaczynski protégé, spoke at the premiere. This film continues that grand idea of rebuilding our memories designating the true heroes and what was black and white in our world. Who was a hero, who was an enemy, a traitor, a murderer, and who acted badly. Duda said it was poetic justice that the premiere was held in the tower Stalin imposed upon Warsaw. But his critics accuse him of reviving a very Soviet tradition, that of rewriting history. 
You just heard during that report criticism of the ruling Conservative Party, the Peace Law and Justice Party, uh, led by uh, Mr. Kaczynski. Uh, let me ask our guest, uh, Radoslav Murkowski, the European Union is concerned that there are attacks against Poland's democracy, uh, that there are threats against the independence of the media, against the independence of the Supreme Court, of the Constitutional Court. In your opinion, is that overstated or is Poland losing some of its uh, democratic credentials? Well, definitely losing, of course. The Constitutional Court has been paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Uh, most of the legal authorities in Poland, just to name Supreme Court judges, former uh, uh, chairmen of the Constitutional Tribunal, National Board of Lawyers, the Ombudsman, Helsinki Foundation, and the Venice Commission, are absolutely clear about the violation. The, as of today, I may simply say, the rule of law in Poland is not present. That's one of the pillars of democracies, and uh, th this is crystal clear. So uh, we, we have a real problem. This is not a political thing. It is a legal problem, and uh, the, 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 this is unfortunately a deadlock in which the ruling uh, party is not willing to step back. All right, Radoslav Markovsky, uh, head of the politics department at the Warsaw School of Social Sciences. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Do stay tuned. We're going to take a very short break. We're back in just a moment with more world news.